Welcome to the R&B Only Show. Please note that the opinions expressed here belong solely to the hosts and guests, not to Colors Worldwide, Inc., our affiliates, or sponsors. The content is provided as is for entertainment and information purposes only, without any guarantees of accuracy or completeness. Colors Worldwide, Inc. is not liable for any errors or omissions, nor does mentioning products or services imply endorsement. This disclaimer is subject to change, and we encourage our audience to stay updated. But we're also joined by PG County's very own Alex Vaughn. Burr, 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 burr. How did you go from PG County to being signed to LVRN? It's actually such a crazy story to tell right now because... Artists like that, when you've been grinding for so long, when you're finally getting your just due, I think like the performance even is more of a statement. Absolutely. What do you feel that R&B artists need the most of right now? I would say... R&B only. Welcome back to the R&B Only Show, episode 13. I'm your girl, Jovi E, and this week is a little different. Tierra is living her best life in Jamaica. So we've got Jabari, of course, our CEO and founder. Hey, Jabari. Hey, what's up? I'm co-hosting today. Co-hosting. Uh, co-hosting. Jesus, be a fence. And producing. And Live producing. No, I'm anyways. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but we're also joined by PG County's very own Alex Vaughn. Burr, 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 burr. Yes. <laughs> How are y'all feeling this week? I'm feeling pretty good. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah. It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Tuesday. You know, days just kind of roll together. Every day is the same day, Literally. but a different day. But yeah. a different day at the same time. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good. You know, this weekend was, was uh, Coachella weekend one, so I watched that with the fam at home. <laughs> um, my daughter was... I, this is how I, I judged it. I was like, all right, whoever she's dancing to the most is got the best performances. Valid, and valid. And I feel like it was, um, well, see, she has an early bedtime, but. Let's say, who took the cake? Lil Uzi Vert, for sure. Mm. Was like, I found that very interesting. Yeah, I feel like if I was a baby, I would, I would be dancing to Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was going off to him. I think she just liked the energy and what was happening I understand. On, the, on the screen mixed with auditory stimulation. It was just a lot. That's valid. So, yeah. Also, me hyping her up, too. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this week, we'll be discussing Spotify's list of the top 100 greatest R&B songs of the streaming era, uh, Ari Lennox's messy Instagram story, beef between Chris Brown and Quavo, and, uh, you know, Coachella, Lucky Day, did some crazy shit, um, and so much more. But we can hop right into um, this Coach Coachella takes, Yeah. Um, since we already kind of dibbled and dabbled. My favorite performance, aside from like Tyler Creator, of course, was Victoria Monet. I'm obsessed. Period. I'm obsessed. Yeah, and honestly, I'm just I just love everything that Victoria is doing. Just I just love her ascension. I just love her glow. I just love the energy she exudes. To see her on the Coachella stage, you know, when you're not on the Coachella stage, you see just like, oh my God, Coachella is such a huge stage. So mm -hmm. to just watch just my peers just kind of like get to that point was fabulous. So right. she ate it up real I, bad. I definitely. Uh, Love that performance, you know, from the choreo to just like her running through, you know, like a timeline of of kind of where she was at early on to like the hit record now, which we have. Um, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I do I do want to ask you, Alex, is like when you when you see, how do you feel when you see R and B being more represented in like the big music festivals right now? Oh, I'm overjoyed because, you know, R&B has always been known to be like a slow burn. and mm -hmm. But people do appreciate like just things that feed the soul and people need it. Mm -hmm. And um, it needs to exist more. And, you know, all of us, all the artists in the R&B world, like are just trying to like troubleshoot and figure out what works best for them and how they want to present themselves and how they want to share it. And the fact that it's being received in any increment is just like a step in the right direction. So I'm always just happy to see R&B shine, especially on Coachella stages. Like, you know, I've never thought that Coachella was like a space for R&B. I always yeah. had the mindset like you have to be upbeat and just have like party music. Right. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's, yeah. Especially thinking about how MTV did our girl Victoria Monet just this like last year. They was like, yeah, you're yeah. too early in your like career, in your story for you yeah. to be at the MTV Awards, just for her to be at the Grammys and all these other beautiful spaces. I mean, you know, God be saying things about doors, so mm -hmm. you just that's, gotta let them do what they do. That's the crazy thing too, is like as I'm watching and, and even just like I'm, I'm watching and I might not know an artist, so then I go and like Google the lineup and I look at I look at the lineup and I'm like, wow, you know, Victoria won Best New Artist mm -hmm. this year at the Grammys and like 
she performed way ahead of a lot of folks that I feel like she, you know she probably she probably deserved to perform a little later in the, in the day and been build a little you know higher on the lineup. But I think artists like that when you've been grinding for so long and when you're finally getting your just due, I think like the performance even is more of a statement. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Than it is just like, I'm coming to get a bag. and Same thing with do, Chloe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah, because sure. Chloe's another one who's going to give you a nice one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can sing. Yeah. Like, she has, she has, really has the full package. And she, and she gives her all yeah. every yeah. single yeah. time. Yeah, oh, no doubt about for it. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. But uh, a, st a standout performance for me, like, just that I thought was incredible was um, John Baptiste. Mm. Like, he crushed it he brought out juvenile i always think when you're on a coachella stage when you're on a stage that big and it's you're not just performing to like yes that's one of the biggest music festivals in the world but i think as an artist you have to remember that the stream is also who you're performing to mm -hmm. you know what i mean and like so many people engage in and i don't think there's another music festival where people stream it like it's a streaming event as well. You know what I mean? Like we have that with award shows and we have that with, you know, those type of things. But like live event that is music driven um, that, you know, people people are like actually watching. I don't even know how many people tune into that stream. You know, they don't release those numbers. Yeah. But man, that it's 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 a it's a it's a global event. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, if you're performing, it's always going to like take it to the next notch when you like have a dope special guest. For sure. And John being from New Orleans and having that like second line band feel and bringing out uh bringing out juvenile doing back that ass up. Damn. It was crazy. Like the 99s and the 2000s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, it was yeah. it was incredible. So, yeah, I mean, that was that was a favorite of mine. Um and yeah, there was a lot. Thames of also brought oh, out Thames, Thames. and oh I really like that. Not only was she gorgeous, sounds amazing. Fabulous. Brought out, um, what was it, Wiz, Wiz, Wiz Kid, yeah, and Justin Bieber, yeah. who also sounds. I feel like Bieber was trying to get a little close on that dance too. I seen him. <laughs> you seen it? I seen you seen it? <laughs> it's like the yams. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. it was crazy. Look, but... You don't need no other body. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, but I feel like she's also like she. I think she used the same way that like Usher used the Super Bowl to promote all the other things. Yeah. She used that to like announce that she has. Um, an album coming out in May. Yeah. Like right after her performance, she you sent that tweet out. That's yeah. how you do it. Victoria Monet used the stop to like say that she has that all right video coming yeah, out. Music now video coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the edge of their seats waiting for that. Yeah. And I love that. I think that like I, I come from, everybody knows like I'm like a hip hop head at heart. And I come from that like era of when you have a big announcement to make, mm -hmm. you make it on stage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like my favorite artist would like, diss somebody on like a summer jam stage in new york you know what i mean and like that catapulted a bunch of other stuff that happened but it was like you know i think that now artists are more so making big career announcements on social media mm -hmm. and i like to see people getting back to like making it making an announcement on stage where people can feel it yeah and it can you know reverberate through like the internet just naturally you know there's, what I mean? there's definitely nothing like the human connection versus yeah. like the internet connection like you just like you said it's just higher energy you can you feel the words coming out of your mouth they can feel it you just it just hits it just hits different yeah it hits different it hits different you opened up for quite a few people lately you've been you've been moving and grooving oh, don't we think talk we about forgot that. we got we got to talk about oh. that you opened for Ari Lennox at yes. a couple of her shows and I saw heard you mention that you opened for Kelly Uchis yes Tell me, tell me about collaborating with these folks. Tell me what it felt like to be on tour. What's, yes. What's, what's T? So um, last year was my first year touring, first year on the road. Um, I did Ari Lennox's ASL tour. I did all her dates. Um, I did Kali Uchi's, and I did Victoria Monet at the end of the year. Amazing. Yeah, no, it was... It what, was okay, how about this? What did you learn from each one of those experiences? Um, each audience is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... You want to still be yourself mm -hmm. throughout all of it. Um, of course, with redundancy, because you're doing the same shows every night, like you got to find ways to tweak it a little bit. But sometimes just like the natural motion of yourself that day or the crowd that day, like that can work into your favor. Mm -hmm. And 
anything, anything goes. Um, I would say another thing I learned about the three tours or the big difference is just like just preparedness, you know, just how to be able to pivot. You know, some of the resources were different in certain cities and others mm -hmm. and certain audiences. And it's all just troubleshooting. Like it's mm -hmm. my first time on the road. So just really just being willing to be a student and just remembering the root of it all. And I love to sing and I love to perform and I love to share energy with people. But each crowd was different. Each city was different. Ari's crowd was different from Cali's crowd. Cali's crowd was different from Victoria's. Victoria's was different from Ari's. But they all just had the same like deep love for just art and just good mm -hmm. music and all the authenticity, which is something all three of those ladies Absolutely. possess. So I was just happy to be able to, you know, share my gifts, share the stage, and just you know give them a little sprinkle of you know yeah. what. What Alex Vaughn, you know, what that, what that tastes like. Because we, we were talking earlier, but Mara you know what? I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do it. What are three <laughs> songs that would be like the perfect intro to mm. Alex Vaughn? To me. Yes. Yeah. Like your body like, of work. No okay. one, somebody is living under a rock, has never heard of you. Three songs that would be like, this is Alex Vaughn. That's so crazy because I have songs from my older projects that I feel would, Define me, but I'm gonna just I'm gonna just start with stick to the hurt book. No, no, I would say three songs. Right, I'm gonna start with five, and I swear I'll, I will. Okay. Drop it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say so be it. Okay. Mm -hmm. but that, I think that's your most streamed song. That is one of my most streamed songs, yeah. mm -hmm. and I'd say that because um, I be in my feelings, mm -hmm. but I really do want to find the lesson in it and move forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that that process of moving forward is nonlinear. And I feel like So Be It was that. And as much as, you know, there's music about love, like I need to learn how to love life and love the journey and the process. I feel like So Be It is one of the songs. Take us That's to stuff. therapy, girl. Take us to therapy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would say Mirage is definitely another one um, because that's, I mean, I wrote all these songs, but it's, that's my real those are my real Stop thoughts. Stop hallucinating over lame. Mm -hmm. Listen, <laughs> listen. That hit you one. in a different way. That's I, the one and not the two. Mm -hmm. And I, I would definitely say Mirage because one, it was a fun song to create. I was actually very down bad when I wrote it. And when we started creating the instrumentation around it, it just turned into a whole nother experience. And the song is really about self. Like all the experiences I've ever had in my in, in my entire life is they're about self. They're not about the other person, they're about self. Mm -hmm. And when I was in that situation specifically, nobody could talk sense into mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes- what was, the, what was the situation for those that haven't heard the song and those that don't know? Child. Man. Gotta get in and get out. In a nutshell, I'm gonna get in and get out. In a <laughs> nutshell, like somebody caught me at the right time while I was just kind of like not really aware of what I wanted for myself or how I viewed myself and how I valued myself. And they took advantage of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they, um, it was just very toxic, like very misleading. You know, they say they're going to do one thing and talk you up and they just do the exact opposite. Mm, and, wow, yeah. you know, as soon as you act like you about to leave, that's when they want to come back around and do all the things. Just very textbook. Mm. And like I said, you know, sometimes people catch you at the right time where you kind of just want to feel something and maybe you feel like pain is what you're looking for. And that seemed to be what I needed, but I knew in my core it wasn't. Mm. And my friends saw it on my face and I didn't really talk to my parents about it, but they can kind of just tell I was off and nobody could snap me out of it <laughs> except for me. So when oh, I looked myself fact. in the mirror, like on God, I swear I was like, just, you know, stop a losing name of a lame ass niggas. Mm. Lame ass niggas. Hey. Yeah. So I'll snap I, out of it in time. I'll Listen, snap out of it in time because okay. it's your own process. Like, yeah, you know, they can do they can do wrong things, but it's really like how much you allow it to happen and how mm -hmm. much you stick around. Mm -hmm. So I think that song's important because I want people to reflect mm -hmm. on self. And it's just a bum ass. Does song. not mean they not a bum. It just means But they might be. But they might be, but you might have a little bum bum in you too. That might have been you said what you said it might have been what you needed, but it's really what you felt like you deserved at the time. What is I felt, really exactly. is really it. That might have been what you felt like you deserved and, and you just needed to snap out of that. And I think that's yeah. And I think my last song will be hmm. I would say it's a song of mine called Rain. Okay. It's a song of mine called Rain. It's from an old EP of mine called The Shift. Dropped okay. it 
way back when. And that song is another song about self, like just about just trying to figure out your place in the world and how you're not the one to complain, but you don't like being uncomfortable, but you got to have rain to get the sun. And I've always wanted to be an artist and a human in general who can find a way to get the message across without feeling like I'm preaching to you or I'm mm -hmm. lecturing you or, oh, she's a motivational old lady. You know, nah, whatever the case you can, is. You can get the demon time, too. Because we can get, because I was going to say demon time. I'm I, like, that's what I thought you were going to say. I'm a child say. of God. <laughs> and when you hear demon time, you might think something else. But, you know, that's that's definitely a... That was a, my introduction. That, that was my introduction to That's your introduction? And, and I was like, whoa, like, with the title, you know what <laughs> okay, I mean? But, but you, then as I got into it, I was like, oh, okay, like... Yeah, but I was just, I think it was just provocative. I, you me. know what? I don't it's know. Maybe I, yeah. damn. I don't know. It, it really what, is between Rain and Demon Time. Because Demon Time is one of my personal favorites. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, like all my like uncles and aunts, that sounds weird, but they be like, man, Demon Time, that's that one. You, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you kind of went crazy on that. I'm mm -hmm. like, thanks, guys. Nope. All right, now I'll just say Demon Time, Mirage, Mirage. and so be it, like with the it. follow up Lock of Rain. In. Like yeah, runner-up yeah. rank. I like that. I like that. Why, why, why we stuck on here for a second? Um, Alex, you said you write. Uh, is it all or most of your music? Uh, I write a good ninety percent of my music. Mm. Let me ask you something. So I'm gonna actually take it down to eighty-eight because I've been growing. Okay. Okay. And I enjoy. I enjoy collaborating. So what? What do you feel like when you need to pull another writer in? Like, what is it that someone else? sees and can hear and can contribute to whatever the project is um like what are, what are you looking for in that in that contributor just a new perspective mm. you know i feel like all the best songs are just conversations mm. or it's just the feeling and you know sometimes you feel like you're the only person feeling something but someone else could be feeling that exact same thing and be seeing it from a whole different lens and it's just a matter of us just conversing and yeah. And it just, sometimes those those sessions, they're not always like, what rhymes a bear? Care, let's write that yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it's just like really just a conversation and we might disagree for like three of the five hours. Mm -hmm. And then by the fourth hour, it's like the complete sentence and the whole thought comes out. But it came with us like going back and forth and taking a break and yeah. getting a bite to eat. And, and you know, as I'm not even, I'm not gonna speak for Craig, I'll speak for myself. Like, I can get trapped in my head very easily. Like, I can just have a whole conversation and just start rabbit holing and creating tabs. And sometimes I just need a fresh new pair of ears or just a trusted friend mm. to just sit down and talk to them. I'm not saying like my homegirls get songwriting credits on my, on my songs, mm -hmm. it's not like that, but just like really just helping like massage the thought. Mm. And I happen to be the singer, the person who's presenting the idea, but it's like a result of all of our work. You know, yeah. the the writers, the producers, the engineers. So I want to make sure everybody's just equally involved and just teamwork makes the dream work. Is it ultimately about getting to the best product? Because I, I feel that sometimes young artists who can write, sing, maybe even produce sometimes, I find that they, because they have the ability to do a lot of things, that same ability hinders the growth because, yeah. you know, it might not always lead to the best product because you don't have other eyes and ears on it. I like think Tyler Perry. <sighs> you said it. But... And did? <laughs> I did not. I, I did. <laughs> yeah. um, I would say, you know, some people think that the best product is a perfect product. Mm. or like the highest quality product or like the, the strongest beat or the hardest lyrics, you know what I'm saying? But that's not really the best record. I think is like whatever is your best at that moment mm. and whatever you felt, you know, it felt true to you. You know, you felt comfortable, but you felt a little stretched. You just have a feeling like that's your best product. Sometimes I'll be in sessions with people and it'll be a six, seven hour session. We might come up with one verse and a hook. You know what I'm saying? And may not come back to that song for whatever. Or sometimes we knock the whole thing out at once. Yeah. Sorry, I keep touching the mic. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really just about being true to that moment. And sometimes you may not walk out with a record. And I think that maybe with some young creatives, especially with looking online and just seeing like streaming numbers and people with just all the things you don't have, you're just like, I got to just make it get sh straight A's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got to just hit all the time to to acquire that. But in order to get 
those A's you got to like read and you got to learn and you got to like take the test and fail and you got to be ready for a pop quiz or be ready to just like read a new genre. You know, you just have to be really willing to experiment. I think being a creative is very um, unique because there's no actual correct way to do it. Yeah. It's, it's really oh, yeah. all feeling based. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would tell anybody to just do what, what feels right to you. And if you feel like there's more, it's because there is. And don't force it. Don't try to squeeze it out. You might have to just take a breather or work on something else. Don't beat a dead horse. Mm -hmm. um, it just takes patience. I think everybody's just like looking for perfection and I'm guilty of it too and get frustrated when it's not. But imperfection is really mm -hmm. the most beautiful part of the creation. How did you go from PG County to being signed to LVRN? You have some crazy label mates over there. Love Renaissance for those that may not know what oh, the, that that uh, per shout out to the not Laverne. Cut it out. It's <laughs> That's <not Laverne>. crazy. <laughs> you like, oh yeah, she's signed to Laverne. How? Yeah, what yeah. was that trajectory like? It is actually such a crazy story to tell right now because it's just a testament to how growth is nonlinear mm. because I remember I first moved out here in 2018. I mean, it was just an opportunity to come out here and I was like, I'm gonna go. I had no plan of action, um, had some unforeseen circumstances and had to go right back home, right? And I was mad and I was like, I'm gonna be back in LA in six months, you know, blah, 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 blah. I had to, I quit my job, I went back to the job. Like, where it was, was just it, where like, was the job? Uh, what was I working? I was working at Zara. I was I working always at Zara. Know what the jobs I are. actually worked at Zara and I worked, no, I was working at Zara. Okay. I was working at Zara and I remember walking out and I was like, yeah, bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone working at Zara right now with that hey, talent that needs to hear this. I was the cashier at Zara on F Street. And uh, if you know, you know. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I went back home and I just got back to work and I just, I don't know. It wasn't even like I had a plan of action when I came back. It's like, you know, unforeseen circumstances. You don't even... You don't even know what to do. You just do your best. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing. Like, you know, whatever felt right, I would just keep creating and just living life, dating, breaking up, writing songs. And then 2019, I wrote Mirage, right? And that's a year removed from being in LA. And then 2020, the pandemic happened. And I was just working on music. There's literally nothing else to do. And at this point, I'm getting, I'm getting unemployment checks. And flights is like $25. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So mm -hmm. I was Damn just, me. I was just making music. I wasn't even thinking about like when I was going to get back. I just was focusing on what I love, which is mm -hmm. always the way I'm able to get back centered. Like, what do you love? None of that other stuff. What do you love? And um, I was in the house and there was an Instagram live because they would do Instagram live talent shows. Right. Now, granted, I don't really... I'm, I get on live and sing and play on the piano all the time, but I'm not like one of the people who like try to go on people's lives and showcase myself. I've just, I've never been that person. Like I just, you know, if there's a mic, I'm gonna sing, but I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I randomly, someone was just tweeting like, yo, somebody tagged me to get into this live on Twitter. And I just was like, oh, what is this? And I went on the live and I just requested to get in. I mean, who, I don't think they're gonna pick me. I'm just... Pressing buttons, just sitting here, there's nothing to do, everything's closed. And they picked me, and I was sitting at the piano, and I played Rain, okay. and I played another original song on the piano, and they were like, shit, we got, we needed y'all, thanks for joining, <laughs> bye, right? And I'm just like, and I don't, I still don't really know who they are. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I mean, okay, like, I won the contest, I guess, right? And so then I get an email about, like, you know, just, getting to know me. They're asking me to like watch like a video and just answer questions. And I remember like saying to my team, like, yeah, you know, they sent me email and they want me to answer these questions. And they're like, answer questions. And I'm like, I mean, I ain't got nothing else to do. I was like, so I, I watched it and I, you know, answered the questions and I didn't really hear back from them. Again, I don't really know, you know, who they are. I don't know who signed to them. And mm -hmm. I, I'm still not really a person who's like, wowed by stuff like that because mm -hmm. it, it, it ain't me. For those that don't know, at the time, who who was signed? Uh, it was Summer Walker. Summer, Summer Walker. Black. Now, they have some heavy hitters. Yeah. Let me be clear. Yeah. Like, who else is on and I And I had no idea. Like Side, Summer Walker, Black. Oh, yeah, Black. Westside yeah, Boogie. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. Who else was there at the time? Uh, BRS Cash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
and they're super awesome. But um, yeah, so I didn't hear back from them. And I just kept going. I went back to making music and figuring out what to do during the pandemic. And then I was like, let me just go to L.A. I ain't got nothing else to do. Went out there. And I was just more productive and I was just creating more. And then I was like, damn, I don't really think I have a reason to go back to Maryland. And then, you know, my manager, he's just playing my songs for people, you know, in the studio, doing what managers do. Hey, yo, I got a hot artist. Mm -hmm. And so I, he ended up playing Mirage for a member of LVRN. And so I came to L.A. with August 2020 and by like May 2021, I was meeting Justice, who's the head of uh, A&R. And I didn't, again, I still don't know who, who he is. And my manager, <laughs> love him so much. He loves to give me like just enough context for me to have questions. It doesn't work. But he was like, yeah, just get dressed. You know, I'm about to introduce you to somebody. I'm like, oh, all right. But I'm glad he did that because it just didn't give me an opportunity to overthink or underthink. Mm -hmm. So... Went regular, met Justice. We just sitting, talking, like, yeah, you know. Blah, 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 blah. And then after the thing, I'm like, oh, nice meeting you. See ya. And my manager's like, yeah, I think we should, uh, I think we should go celebrate. I'm like, mm -hmm. why? Question mark, question mark. <laughs> I don't understand. He's like, I think they're going to give you an offer. And I'm like, I just, I just, what did I miss? Like, I, I, did I do, do that's fine. Did you guys have a, like, I just, I just felt so oblivious because I just be in my bubble and just kind of like talking and existing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see y'all, y'all don't flowing. see what I see. And y'all see me, I don't see what y'all see. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It was just, it was, I was bewildered. And it was a, it was a beautiful experience. And by October, I was a signed artist. I feel like I remember that post about like you signing because I, I think I follow money. I did follow yeah. money and I saw his post. I'm like, oh, yeah. it, that's crazy. It was crazy. And it's, and you know, I remember like when I graduated high school and I got in a full scholarship to college for classical music. And I remember telling sure. my parents, like, I don't want to go to college. I just want to vibe. Of course, that doesn't register to a parent oh, yeah. when you graduate in high school and you got a full scholarship, right? And I remember I was in college and I was like really like depressed and I had gotten sick and I ended up leaving. I tried to stay for like for two semesters for two years. And then I remember my parents were so pissed and I was like, and I did not know what my next move was. I just knew that I wasn't happy here and I'm happy doing music. Mm -hmm. The music I want, I have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I really, <laughs> I really had no idea. Like I was just gonna keep making songs and just keep grabbing whatever I could reach and just make whatever I could with it. And I mean, I would, I mean, when I think about it, fast forward all these years later, like of course I'm here, but I had no idea in the moment. And I think just continuing to like get up and pivot and just be willing to learn and just be and remember to like put what you love first, mm -hmm. not what you think is popular, or what you think will please your parents or your friends or what's cool to your friends. Because your friends aren't necessarily your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, they're your friends. Um, I don't know. It just it's a beautiful thing. And I'm still learning and hearing myself say the story just reminded me to just keep keep pivoting and keep getting up and just keep pushing forward even though you don't know what the next day looks like. In that same vein. In that, oh, okay. In that same vein. <laughs> what is, what can we expect next from the Alex Vaughn? What can we? From the, the Alex Vaughn. All the dramatics. You know, I am definitely very excited for the next chapter that I share with the world because I am in such a, unique and personal journey right now. Um, just figuring out like, really, what what do I feel I deserve? You know, not what do I feel that other people think I deserve or what do I think, what do I feel like I should be saying? Like, what do I really want to say? And all the music I've ever created and everything I've given has been true to me, but it has been like a very safe and shelled version of me. And it wasn't until like maybe five or six months ago that I realized that. So, um, I'm excited to just like share this journey of like being honest with myself and and uh, and expressing that in the new music, of course, and just I don't know, just challenging myself. This 
this is my year of really like claiming the unseen. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I'm excited to, I, I, I don't know what that's about to look like. Yeah. I know it's going to be bigger unseen. and greater and stronger and sexier and more hairstyles. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. I love that. I, I got, <laughs> you know, Alex, I'm always like analyzing the business of the space that we're in, right? So yes. like I'm over here trying to steer the ship of the company in the right direction, diversifying what we're offering to the public. And I always ask artists, like, what do you feel that R&B artists need the most of right now? Uh, hmm. R&B artists... And I'll, I'll, I'll maybe break it up from the industry at large, but then also from the audience and the fans. I would say grace and patience. Mm -hmm. Grace and patience. Because um, R&B is, uh, is soul. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can't just like create a machine and just soul music. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's possible. Some can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some can, but... In order to like get the songs that like hit your core, like it has to hit me in the core first. Mm -hmm. And I have to live the experience to be hit in the core. And the same way like it took time for me to write Mirage is like shit has to marinate mm -hmm. in your system. And I think we're in a space where things can be generated so quickly and you can just figure out the science and the math to it and the business behind it and get it done so so much faster. But is it really like the flavors that you're looking for? Is it really like the quality product? Like, did the did the meat really marinate? You know, I think. Is it falling off the bone? Is it really falling off mm. the bone? Or are you just like just chewing it because everybody's chewing it? Like wow. y'all can all say the food is nasty, but everybody's eating the food. So, and this isn't me throwing shots at any. No, I love this analogy. Music. Oh my goodness! But I, I've always it's been so relevant. I've always been a person is like, yo, you just gotta, with the way I learn things, like you have to just let it marinate. And mm. I feel like R&B just has to marinate. And we're in an era of things that's happening much, much faster and being able to access everything. And it's personal. Yeah. So people have to like, you know, be okay with saying, sit down and go sit your ass on the couch. The food's not done yet. Yeah. Or this isn't your plate. You know what I'm saying? Mm, and um, It's not for you. It's not for you. Mm. And that's like a really hard human pill to swallow. So wow. I just, R&B and just human beings, grace and patience. Wow. Grace I love patience. that. I really love that. Grace and patience. I mean mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> we did ask um, Instagram if they had any questions for you. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so shout out to S. Boogie. She wanted to know what has been your biggest personal hill to overcome or like habit to break. And then they also wanted to know how did we get um, to abs and ad libs, which I'm a fan of. <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen her abs um, and ad libs videos? I have not. No. She is. She basically like works out and sings while she's working out. Like, oh, that's yeah, amazing. Which concept. is a great technique yeah. to like for like on stage performances yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. But like abs and ad libs. Um, I would say the hardest thing I've had to overcome and the biggest habit to break that I am still currently breaking is how I talk to myself. Mm. Um, that's a powerful one. And that's why I, I've been saying like I'm on a really personal journey because I just I really hit like a wall where I was like, yo, why is my body responding to this conversation this way? Or why is that hurting me so bad? And why is my immediate response is to crack a joke about it or mm. to brush it off or to just say, I don't care. You know, it's just like being nonchalant was like just a way of life for so long. And you gotta be chalant, <laughs> you gotta mm. be chalant. And, you know, sometimes I feel like we're, again, I just feel like we're in a, in a time where we're just kind of conditioned to, to suffer and to be okay with suffering. And um, we kind of tell ourselves to suck it up. It's all right, man, you good. Like, stop being a punk. Like, you know, you being a baby about it. I do this all the time. And it's just not healthy. It makes me more sick. It doesn't make me feel more productive. It's like I look for other people to, like, validate these these negative thoughts that I'm only feeding myself. And there's a lot of, like, old, tired theories and stigmas that we have just, like, 
pled to, and we don't know why. And internalized. And, and yeah. internalized that we made in in 2002. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When somebody told you you couldn't jump rope with them and you had no idea that it's been manifesting and you just saying you don't give a fuck. But you give all the fuck. But you do give a fuck. And then you find yourself like, I have found myself being able to, now that I can double dutch. So that wasn't really my experience. <laughs> but but for real, there, there had to have been something that happened a long time ago that just told me to just like crack a joke if it hurt my feelings or to be able to beat them to the punch mm -hmm. and, and say the joke first, which is really me just like digging at myself mm -hmm. to not get hurt. Mm -hmm. And then I always had music. Mm. And, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's been my savior. It's been my friend. But it has been like a Band-Aid in how I really talk to myself. And even in my songs, like, I find myself, like, saying things that I have never said with my voice. I might have sung it mm. or wrote it. But, like, tell myself, Alex, you're not the one to complain, but you don't like the feeling of being uncomfortable. I wrote that as a song, right? But I would never say that to myself. Like, I'd rather That's be crazy. like... Why are you complaining? Why are you even uncomfortable? Like, I'm just very harsh on myself. So I think that um, one thing that I'm currently overcoming a habit I'm breaking is just my relationship with myself. Like, I, I ask God to just change my, my words. Like, give me better words to say to myself and just replace them with kinder things. Because those little nuances, those little words, Make looking in difference. the mirror and, and instead of rolling your eyes, just looking there and saying, you're beautiful. Like, whether you believe it or not, whether it seems cheesy or not, like, those little deposits really make a difference. Mm. Um, so, yeah. I Just to not harp on that too long, just the way that I talk to myself. It, sound, it sounded like a, kind of a, a financial analysis or analogy would be, like, compound interest and, like, the power of that. Because you mentioned, like, those affirmations are, like, deposits. I'm going I'm to I'm take it to What is business. he talking you know about? <laughs> <laughs> like, <not playing. laughs> and I would say, like, but seriously, like, I'm following, one, I'm of the, one of the most powerful things is compound interest, right? You keep investing in, investing in, investing in, and le it, it, it's not until a long time after investing that you see what's actually bringing you the most returns. It's not how much you're investing currently, but how, how long you've been invested. In, yeah. And that... And, My friends, it's compound mm, interest. And sometimes <laughs> it's not like depositing $50 every time or $100 every time. Sometimes you might just got three cents. That's all you, you got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and but the deposit is the deposit. But the deposit is the deposit. Mm. And I feel like once you just figure out like how to treat yourself better and how to coach yourself and how to better gentle parent yourself, you just start unlocking new things. And that might feel like another step back, right? Which is... Oh, it's a real feeling. But it's like a new beginning with experience. Mm -hmm. And you start to move a lot swifter and you're able to see the cautions a lot faster. And everything just starts to make God a little bit test more you. sense. When you get closer <sighs> is when you get that big test. Everything that you've learned thus far is going to yeah. come right back up. And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. And one of the things I'm learning is like, you know, he'd be like, Alex, I don't know because you Did don't. Did you really learn it? Did you really learn it? And do you really believe it? And do you feel like you deserve it? Because mm. mm. you do. But do you believe that? It's just all how you talk to yourself. Mm. So S Boogie. That's your camera right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Talk to Don't him. be talking bad to yourself yeah. now. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Okay, but ad libs and abs, abs and ad libs, abs and ad libs. How did that come to fruition? It is so funny. You know, I am on a wellness journey. You know, I'm trying to. No, I'm trying. I'm working out, making go. better choices. Just overall, like I said, it's not just exercise and nutrition. It's really just overall wellness, right? Mm -hmm. And I also needed to put out some content. And I'm not a content guru. I'm very, I'm very uncomfortable with like trying to stage something. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, I need to work out. And I was actually just bored singing one day and I was being recorded. And so I was like, oh my God, you can sing? Why are you doing that? That's crazy. And I was like, really? And so I started doing other things and I was like. Not the leg. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to add that to my gym routine. Like that's the that's called the uh, the twerking work. Oh, <laughs> Matt, oh, it's off the gym routine now. 
But I was like, <laughs> I can't be doing a twerk and working the gym. <laughs> I was just read, right, right. Please don't do the twerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reading. I'm like getting responses from people in person and in comments. Like I can't do that. That's hard. That's hard as shit to do. And I'm like, really? You know, just things that I'm just doing out of boredom. That I'm like, oh, this is impressive. Okay, shit. Sure. Well, Let me do them. Let me just start. You know, making it make a little bit more sense. And sometimes Jazz be singing. <laughs> <laughs> and then and it's, okay. it's so funny because like I from my point of view I am fighting for my life because I'm like let me make sure I can get the verbs right make sure I get the words right make sure it's making sense make sure I'm telling the story and I forget like Alex you're doing a whole like other thing with your body while you're singing and I really can be hypercritical on myself like I don't think that was a good take I don't think that was it but it's really about just making deposits and you know, and just showing up sometimes. Staying consistent. Sometimes and staying consistent, and that's one thing that I really vowed to like work on mm. this year is just consistency. And um, I'm I'm very proud of it. I of course you know redundancy it can be tiring sometimes, but then I think about like McDonald's fries and how like you will order McDonald's fry at any time, any century because of the redundancy. So it's a perennial know, seller. Speaking of McDonald's fries, Artsy Dan underscore wanted to know what are your guilty pleasures? Mm, that's a good question. Mm. Like that segue? That was a nice oh, segue. Awesome. Yeah, shit. Shout out to Tierra yeah, yeah. with her transition yeah. spur. <laughs> guilty pleasures. Um, sometimes I'm on Instagram, I watch like hydraulic press videos. What? Hold on. What? I don't know what that is. <laughs> what in the world is that? It's just like this big hydraulic press and they just put things in it and it just slowly Oh, I know what you're talking about. I see this on TikTok. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's so just, it just takes something like, like it'll be, what kind it of things be like they put in book. it? It could be like a book. It could be like Yeah, like, like a, bears, roll, a roll of toilet paper. Like, it doesn't matter. Is it is it the is it the audio that you like or is it just the visual or both? I both, I think it's both. Okay. Sometimes I really don't like them. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah. this is like unorganized. Like I, I don't like mm. how that came out. Yeah. It is strange. I don't know what it is, but I'm just like, oh my god. At least it's not a pimple popper video because some those people are I can't do it. crazy. I can't do it. Some people love those mm -mm. videos. Like. Or like clean. Anyways, um, next topic. Hold on. What's your guilty pleasure? Um, doesn't have to be content watching. Just in my general. guilty pleasure. I think yeah. guilty oh, I have a crazy sweet tooth. Oh, oh okay, it's okay. bad. Yeah. Like I don't care how. I was just saying this. I don't care how full I just said I was. Yeah. There's always room for something sweet. Got it. Yeah. What's another guilty pleasure? What's one of your guilty pleasures, Debar? Um, I'd have to say. Um. I can spend hours, like hours, hours, hours. I'm talking about six hours at a time when the fam is asleep watching rap battles. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's mine. I'd say, yeah. I like I'm talking about like rewinding, like I'm he's, he's ungodly amounts at, of time. At night, like mm. at, in, I'm talking like <laughs> at at four. To 6 a.m., you know. That's, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I feel like that, like, I could see that. Yeah, like, yeah. very Jabari-ish. Yeah. I have another guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. Demon of. And they, they're, I mean, it's not like, oh, of course you are, you're creative. But um, when I'm, like, with my brother and my cousins and stuff, I'll be like, yo, this poem to be let just freestyle. Like, mm. a whole rap cypher. I do not know how to rap. <laughs> like, sometimes it's just syllables and just, like, feels, and we'll just throw out a word and just kind of go for it and also just random monologues like mm -hmm. that's another thing I just be doing like I don't know sometimes I'll be in the car and we'll just be like pull over for that ass too fast oh. and then <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just do as many voices as we can oh my god I love that's it saying shit like comedy. That. I love it um and it can happen at any random moment oh. I feel like that's you and Duran Bernard would be like Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Such that would. That I just want to. I just want to. Yeah, I want to put a camera on both of y'all and just have y'all do that. What's, that monologues. would be magic. Yeah. What's so funny is that like the RB community, like we all know each other, we see each other, we mm -hmm. smile, we hug each other, we say stuff, say what's up, and maybe it's just me because I'm like a little bit of a hermit. But like me and Dorian have yet to kick it, and That's we are crazy. overdue yeah, real yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, y'all need to, man. That, Dorian, yeah. I was texting you in a second. Yeah, yes, because yeah, sure. I just, I just can. I can see it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Just I love good, it. And the music people, would good, be 
Mm. Oh, that's a whole nother. Because you know what? This brings me to another point. There was a video of, I think it was Lucky Day was on Sway in the Morning. And Mm. he had asked Lucky, like, who does he think, um, who does he think, not competes with him, but who is seeing him vocally. And Mm. his response was like, respectfully, nobody. Nobody seeing me vocally, which... I mean, if you feel that way, you feel that way. It's like in 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 hip hop, if they ask you, if they ask an artist, are you, you know, who's the goat or who's the best, you know, or or what's your top five, you usually want to include yourself in there. So I respect the answer. You know what I mean? I I, I kind of want to see that that um, confidence in a, in an artist. So who who's one of you know, arguably one of one of the he's on the upper tier in R and B right now. Yeah. Right mm-hmm. now. He sounds great live. Yeah. Now, it's not now, to take that now. away from That's him what, at all. As but a, like off the top of my head, I but, can name some other folks. Yeah, but so are we? Are are you saying like that? Duran Bernard comes to mind? Like yeah. that man vocally. I mean, there's a lot of people vocally that I would say would crush Lucky Day, but. I'm not necessarily mad at him for saying that. I, I respect what he is saying as an artist and that he believes in himself mm-hmm. that much. Mm-hmm. I, I will definitely uh, second what Jabari is saying. And you just have to have like a a nearly delusional mm. level of confidence. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what people want. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what you like. You have to like get people to buy into your world. Now, sometimes like with myself, like, I have a problem being delusional sometimes because oh no, girl, be Delulu. I gotta be, be a little as Lulu as you yep, need to call be. me little Lulu. Yeah, because I'm about to get Lulu. Her, <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, hearing an R&B singer say something like that, or hear a, a a male artist say like, "Ain't nobody better than me," is like I'm not like I wasn't rubbed the wrong way about it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I know Lucky Day knows of plenty other male vocalists who can sing the house down. Mm -hmm. Like, would I say Mm -hmm. that that person could beat me? Like, no, I I don't want to say that. Valid. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it makes sense. Valid. I don't. There are a lot of fabulous, fabulous, fabulous male singers. And um, to be honest, like, you remember, like, I don't play video games like I used to, but like, in 2K Street or whatever, mm-hmm. and you could just see everybody's stats. Like, you know, they're good at free throws and they not really good with this and da 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 Like, everybody has different averages. So, yeah. for real, for real, it, it's probably like a 50-way tie, you know, and everybody might lose. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because everybody's got different strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Potentially. Respect. Like, you, 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 <laughs> I don't you, like, you say he should have kept his mouth shut. No, I don't think he should have kept his mouth shut. I think, but like what, like you said, like if somebody's saying who are the top, like you want to include yourself in there, but you're also still naming other people who like are up there. And he he was like, he stood on that. It's me against, it's big me, period. Stand on business. Hard stop. Hey, Which man. like, like you said, be, you have to be delusional. I get it. And, and just to be devil's advocate, Real quick, because mm-hmm. I mean, me like I would. I everybody would answer the question differently. I'd probably say, "Ain't nobody better than me." But you know, if, if shout I, out to like, mm, if I had to, if something happened, uh-huh. I would definitely say X, Y, and Z. Because there's, there's so many people, we all got different instruments. Right. But mm-hmm. um, to be devil's advocate, sometimes as an artist, you have to really just kind of like block out everything else. Like mm-hmm. you just kind of got to just not be even accidentally influenced and hum mm-hmm. a melody from somebody else's song in your dream. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like. I don't know what else is going on. Like, what's going on with them? I don't know. Like, shit, I just know what's going on with me. It's yeah, my exactly. music. You know what it's I'm saying? Strong. So in one way, it's just like, I'm not really paying attention to nobody because it's really me versus me, always. Mm-hmm. Period. It's just Big Alex, per. Um, but, you know, October London Maybe responded. And how you respond. Maybe it's, it's, it's yeah, not the what, it's the it how. Was, I think it was more of the how. Yeah, I think that's what it was for me. It was more important. of the how. But um, October London responded to the video and just put, like, the cap emoji and there just seemed like there was just a lot going on. I mean, there's already a lot going on in the hip hop world. To what? Like to the video to, of Lucky to, Day. Yeah. Oh, I'm like sorry. Yeah. London responded yeah. Yeah. with a little cap emoji. Yeah. And then we also have on the other side, Chris Brown, of course, dropped um, the deluxe version of his 1111 album. It is now at 35 30, tracks. 35 tracks. 35 tracks. That boy, um, he said he had 1,800 in, a, in one app. That's insane. <laughs> he said That's he had, I think he said he had 15,000. 
He said he had 15,000 in the tuck. <laughs> like, just That's not released. Amount of music. But to that, like, in that, like, how are you experiencing, like, life before your... I mean, maybe his way of making music is different yeah. than, you know, in Alex Vaughn. But, like, how are you experiencing something that, like, is, like, meaningful enough and, like, is going to hit your fans enough to, like... Sit down and stew and like. Really well, he's. I track. mean, he's exper he's experiencing. He's. Ex I mean, he's putting out timely stuff. He's experiencing enough where like he's 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 coming at somebody else on a he record. Is. You know what I mean? And, and putting and, it out. And also, like you know, experience isn't only in just life. Mm -hmm. I, well, that doesn't sound right. But like, I there's life saying. experiences, yeah, yeah. and also just like experience and just like recording and working, and mm -hmm. to be able to like. One, find a team of people who know your voice or know how to stretch your voice. And for you to be able to, like, get into that character, to be able to deliver that in that way, like, that's an art form in itself. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, lots of artists who don't write with other people or who don't take songs from other artists, it's like, you know, I don't want to wear other people's clothes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or I don't, I don't think I'll be able to rock it the same or they can't do it like me. You know what I'm saying? And Got that's it. not really the objective of it anyway. But, um... Yeah, I mean, thirty-five songs—that that's a lot of that's, songs. Yeah. I don't even know how to digest that, but things got to marinate. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. Chris but. Chris Brown's in a whole other stratosphere yeah. with yeah. his just life, career, artistry. So, this is his way of expression, and and we're gonna let him cook. What are your thoughts on just like the R and beef that has been going on? Recently, I feel like you know we've had a, it's a lot. We've had we've there's had R and beef going. On? Oh, there's oh, R and beef. It's a lot. It's there's a lot. there's. I mean, oh, we 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 analyze everything going on in the culture at R and B only. But you know, just some of a few I could name: Trey Songs and Jacquees. L O L. Yeah, you've now got uh, Chris and Quavo, which is like half R and B. I did see that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, yeah, more. There's there's another one I'm missing. Ari Lennox. Got oh yeah, with, Ari got Lennox with Joe. and, and yeah. Joe Budden. I mean, it's just I'm just seeing a, a lot of a lot of stuff going on in R and B, like way more than than usual. Mm -hmm. I go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I drink my water. I drink my water. Yeah. And I mind my business. I go to therapy. Yeah. I write in my journal. I talk to my loved ones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all Ain't I got it. but yeah, I will say that. that as I have my human experience and go on my human and life journey and know how personal that is I can more quickly see other people doing their own thing on their journey mm -hmm. and just kind of let them cook like let them rock yeah. if you gotta get it out that way get it out that way if you gotta apologize later apologize later if you gotta take a deep breather and Lead a country for a little bit. Do that. If you just do you, do what Whatever works best you for you. To. As long as it's working, and as long as it's going better you, yeah. and it made you feel good. I don't know. She said, "World peace." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leave me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think Ari Lennox is going to apologize. I don't think that that's. Nah, that nah. seems. Oh no! Period. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. referring yeah. to her as, a, as yeah. apologizing. Yeah. I'm just, just in saying, general, whoever needs oh, yeah. to, but. But she, 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 ten she toes. She stand ten toes. Ten toes. And I love, I personally love her for it. I yeah. know you have thoughts and feelings. But oh, yeah, I'm in the Ari Hive, so what's up? For those of yeah. you that don't know, um, Ari Lennox posted like 20 videos of uh, Joe Budden getting his glasses knocked off his head by yeah. consequence back in, I don't know what year this was, but this was off of the was Love old. and Hip Hop New yeah. York reunion. And she posted, I'm telling you, when she posted it like 20 times. And then at the very end of it, she said, uh, knocked your little glasses off and everything. Keep my precious name out of your psychotic, animal abusing, women terrorizing, demonic mm. trolling, nicotine encased mouth. That mm. nicotine encased mouth part is hilarious. <laughs> All this meth smoke for a woman, but not for any man beating your ass in real life. Bald bitch. Yeah. I mean... Straight I, like that. Yeah, I, I mean, you Straight showed like it to that. me in the office the other day, and I just was like, man, that's a lot of that's a lot of Instagram stories. Um, back, but back, 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 yeah, back, you know, back, I mean, that's the Aries. I 
I just, I just <laughs> love also like a DMV queen and a DMV okay. queen. Yeah, and period. shout out to DMV. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Howard man. Um, so I just, I just love Ari's music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I just like, I get it. She, she, she has. You know, I was at the show, uh, the Rod Wave show. Mm. Um, where mm. you know she she got the bottle thrown at her and it was just a terrible sight to see. Um, from a fan perspective, you know I, I I can't stand when people like treat performers like that and um, you're going to pay money to experience something. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into providing experiences for you, and then like to disrespect people on stage is is always out of line. It's insane. And um, but I, you know. I'm I'm rooting for Ari so much and I want to see Ari like get to the levels that I feel like she she's going to reach at some point, you know. Um and I just feel like sometimes there's these roadblocks and setbacks. You know what I mean? That like I just I just and and I I understand it's just like it's your reaction and it's how you 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 react to things. Um but yeah, I don't know. I just like I wonder I wonder if I wonder if it if it if and it, and this is not just with Ari in general. I wonder if um I w- it's hard to tell what might stifle your growth as an artist, you know what I mean? And I wonder like I just I'm curious as to like if these things impact other things I, or do they not you know? now granted I'm totally still finding my footing here but I'm gonna just go ahead and say no mm, I don't think yeah. it stifles anything yeah I think like why is that because I, I just feel like you're having your human experience mm-hmm. you're doing what was true to you in that moment and if you stand 10 toes on it like I don't think that's a bad thing yeah. and I feel like if you're being I don't know, reject it for being yourself, then maybe that's not like the the audience that I, I need to be fighting for mm-hmm. or to be working to you. impress or whatever the case. And you just start seething out like who's really here for you and who's really not or who understands like what being a human is like or who is like more protective of their brand. And, yeah. you know, just really just honoring whatever that balance is for you. I, I just don't think that that can be in vain. Like and people yeah. have done a lot more egregious. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. More no, egregious no, 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 for things. sure. For sure. And, and, and I said right after that happened, I, I I literally like sent a public message to Ari like, yo, you're always welcome on an R&B only stage over here. Her. You know what I mean? Like it I, is. I, I, yeah, it I mean, and, it, and it'll happen eventually, you know, okay. but, uh, but yeah, it, to your point, I think that like it didn't, it didn't, it didn't stifle any growth like with us or with our audience or with the, you know what I mean? So I mean, maybe it's just like, honestly, I think it's like, it's, I think people aren't, and I, and I may be like guilty of this. It's like, I just think people aren't used to, and I think this is where her problems lie with Joe. And I think it's like a, a very valid conversation that needs to be had. I think overall, people are not used to black women, women overall, but especially black women, like just speaking their mind, you know what I mean? And like being combative mm. and people may go to like, oh, that, cause I, I, a lot of the comments on the posts and stuff like that are like, you know, fans with the sentiment of like, you know, why is she doing this? And she shouldn't be blah, blah, blah. But it's like, would you say the same? I just always wonder like, would you say the same if it was a man doing it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't think I don't think it would be the same yeah, sort people of people don't like, have the same yeah. energy for yeah yeah other so that's what I that's what I I think it's 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 more a conversation of that is like you know it's um yeah it's like I think people are used to women being in like an agreeable state you know what I mean for sure and and. When you see a woman that is not, it's like it, it's like oh whoa what's oh, going on scary. here oh she's scary she's, yeah, yeah, you know, she's oh, unmanageable she's, yeah, she's you hard can't to work, work with, with her and that type of stuff but it's like eh, ask yourself like what 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 got her there you know what I mean and there's probably yeah. a lot more to unpack and un- uncover because they like poking the bear <laughs> yeah 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 so they like poking yeah. the bear but there there's definitely a lot 
Just a lot going on. But on a lighter note, on a lighter note, uh, Spotify did release a list of the oh, yeah. 100 greatest R&B songs of the streaming era. And I'll just go through the top 10 real quick. Okay. Um, so 10 was Chris Brown and Drake, No Guidance. Number Nine, 10? Number 10. Remember that this is of the streaming, streaming. era. Oh, okay. okay. Of the yeah, streaming yeah, yeah. era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. It was, that was their first club. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, Jasmine Sullivan, Pick Up Your Feelings at nine. Mm-hmm. Rihanna Needed Me at eight. Yes. Summer Walker Session 32 at seven. That needed to be higher. That's very mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Um, six was Solange, Cranes in the Sky. That's one of my favorite songs. Mm-hmm. Five, Bryce, Bryce and Tiller, Don't. Mm-hmm. For sure. Four, Beyonce, Cuff It. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Three, Daniel Caesar and Her, Best Part, which... Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, Frank Ocean, Pink and White. And number one was Scissor's Snooze. Okay. Period. I have a question. Uh, since it's Spotify, are we talking about like they just took the numbers of the top 100 and like literally wrote them in descending order of stream count? Huh. It, I mean, it, it, I no, I don't think so. Okay. I'm looking at the list, I don't think so. And then I'm also thinking. Can we get Rob the, on that real quick? Rob, can you, can you find that out? Like if. Just, just do that uh, top stri- ten. Uh, they have under each song. They have the Spotify streams. Okay. Um, can you go back down to where it says snooze, and then go up real quick again? No, it's not giving that. It's uh, not a numbers thing. Pink and white okay. had a lot more streams got it, got it, got than it. Okay. snooze. Okay. Um, so no, I like I'm not mad at that top ten. I'm proud I of a lot of R and B. If not all R and B. I mean, yeah, it's for R and B specifically. But I don't know that I don't know that snooze should get the number one spot. Well, I, I, I think that snooze should because um I feel like the streaming world has like grown more over the years like mm-hmm. i feel like when snooze came out which was what a year about a year about a year ago like yeah. i feel like social media like post pandemic was just kind of like social media just like caught its fire like mm-hmm. she dropped snooze in the most social media streaming is part of streaming you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying I, that's why i think valid that's that's that would be why i think snooze would be number one like like i said yeah like in just the, just what, yeah, I don't know. Do you feel like uh, this list is like made to, like as like a clickbait, like made to get a reaction oh, yeah, yeah, you know. out of people? I think that thing? the way that these companies are always like putting out lists and, and ranking things, I think it's just like, I think it's a, it's a lot of hot takes mm-hmm. that will be debated Mm -hmm. which will then make you go and check out the list and then stream the list. Right. And then, you know, so I think it's like a a cyclical business move that ultimately like, I mean, to be honest, I think this is like the same, the same thing of like what happens at award shows, you know, like I think, I I do think people should be recognized and, um, you know, and they deserve some sort of like accolades. But when you look at like who this serves ultimately, it's really just the machine of the music industry. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that it's the same thing with like these streaming companies and these publications. It's like get people to bicker and write posts about it and talk about it and then ultimately get them back on the platform and continuously feed us a monthly fee. Yeah, I I, I really try to not say much on stuff like this, but... <laughs> I, I think that those the lists are for everyone but the creatives. It's for, oh, yeah. it's for uh-huh. it's like you said, just for other people to talk about and just for people to create debates and just, you know, keep the business going. But like holistically, like does this like reflect if your song was good or not yeah. or if the song was or wasn't deserving of streams or was or wasn't a good record? Like, no, it's just... It's all subjective. Yep. Literally all of it is subjective, which is why you have to just always just stick to what feels good to you. Yep. Right back to that. Beyond sure. everything. For sure. Yeah. Mm, I'm like, I'm like, eh. Like I would give this top 10 list, I would give it like a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, like, be- that's better just, than Rolling Stone, right? 
No, I think Rolling Stone did a, I think I put Rolling Stone at about the same. But Rolling okay. Stone, I don't know if they did songs. I think they did albums. No, yeah, no, no, that yeah, was no, Spotify was, as well. Was, that was Spotify okay, as well. Okay, Spotify okay. got people together to talk about the like greatest streaming, like albums of the streaming era. And I think that list was a little better than this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the the thing is, like, none of this is fact, right? So it's all, it's, like Alex said, it's all subjective. For sure. And so there's always going to be a debate around it. And and there can never really be, like, a right or wrong answer. Um, Sir is joining uh, SZA April and May on that SOS tour mm. in yeah, Australia. Yeah. yeah. That's is it hard. just Australia? Is it yeah. Australia and New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just overseas. Down under. Oh. It's overseas. Yeah, I mean, I love to see... These like, first off, I just love R and B, uh, R and B centric labels. I would say like yours, you know, like where you're at. Um, I love how TDE is putting two artists together that fit well together. You know what I mean? Um, Shout out TDE. Yeah, you know, and I just, I just, I just think it's a, a moment for R and B to to. I just think we need to see more. R&B click-ups like this, you know what I mean? And I think that it's, you know, oftentimes the business gets in the way of, of, of a lot of this collaboration. Um, but I've always said this. I, I, th I don't know if I've said it on, on the show, but, I mean, I've said it in here internally all the time. I think I think the biggest thing that R&B needs right now as a whole, to me, is like uh, an all-women arena tour, mm. you know? like, And I think that you know, putting some of the top players, like, because you, you see it a little bit, right? And especially now we're talking about, like, the, the this is probably the biggest year over the last decade for R&B music in a live space. Mm -hmm. Like, the amount of tours so that are tours. out in 2024. So many festival lineups, too. Festival, everything, yeah. you know, like, just what we've got going on. It's like, the, the, the thing that's going to take the genre to the next level is, like, a movie type arena tour and i think that like the way that that happens is if the top ladies in the space get together and do mm -hmm. it you know mm -hmm. i know um when i first in 2022 i know summer walker had uh it was like a festival-esque but it was at the crypto arena and it was yeah. an all-woman lineup yes well, i remember that yeah mm -hmm. it was saucy santana only exception but, okay, yes, 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 yes. But yes. it was uh -huh. an all-woman lineup, and it was fire. Yeah, so imagine that and just going out. Filled. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so. I feel like I do remember seeing that. Yeah. It was myself. Yeah. It was sure. Joyce Rice. Yep. Um, Summer. Ari. Ari, right? I want to say, yeah, 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 And Jasmine was on it, too, yeah. That's uh -huh. fire. I think it was I remember fire. seeing that, and I think that's what I was like, yeah, this needs to go out, like, there? on a full tour. If she wasn't, she should have been. Yeah. Yeah. I feel she's like top of the game, R and B women wise. Oh, it was fab. That like she's up there with Summer, SZA, yeah. Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, one thousand yeah. percent. Like those are the yeah. cool. Maybe and I know maybe we'll make it happen. Everything like always sounds better in theory than in practice, but you know, all theories gotta be put to practice. So mm -hmm. I, I'm excited for when that day comes, because I think it's Definitely on the horizon. You know, yeah. I think first thought you think like a whole bunch of women on the road is like uh, it's expensive, dramatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I was blessed enough to have like fabulous experiences being on tour with women. So, yeah. You know, and you have some like really iconic collabs even on your latest project with Money Long, with Ari Lennox. Like, and you, Summer. You, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Summer. Oh, yeah. yeah. You too. Shout out to the women. They're just yeah. beautiful Shout out and to fabulous. You. Shout out to you. Shout You're out beautiful. to me. I, I love the okay. collab. I love. I. That's one thing about R and B that I feel like is something that the new generation has brought to the table that is very different than like, you know, what we what we saw in the '90s and early 2000s is the collaborations. Mm. Like, I just want y'all to continue to work together um, because it, we would see collaboration, you know, from writer, artist, producer, artist, but like. Artists collaborating with other artists like your generation of R and B is, it's like it's incredible, and I just want to keep it up. I think I think it's fun because you know we're we're the new class. Yeah. You know we're the the juniors and seniors in the high school right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You know so when 
you, before we got to this point, you might've been like, oh, I'm trying to work with this person. I'm trying to work with, you know, them and this and that. But like, we are them now. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, let's just get to know each other. And not only as artists and as brands and as an opportunity, but just as people. Yeah. You know, we're like, we work on the same floor in the office. Yeah, so yeah. it's cool to be able to like meet our, meet my peers and just just build a natural and organic relationship with them because we want the best music too. Mm -hmm. Or the, the best product, best art. Yep. Best art. Speaking of art and music, of course, new music. You know where to find it. Newnew.rmbonly.com. Yeah, there were there were quite a bit of uh, releases. Of course, like we said, Chris Brown dropped the deluxe version of 1111. We got uh, Chloe with uh, Boy Bye. Who yeah, which I feel like is like, I mean, after because I watched the music video and listen to the, whenever an artist drops a video mm -hmm. and drops a song at the same time, mm -hmm. I'm always watching a video because I feel like I can get two things done at once. I don't okay. gotta, you know, go back. Um, but the video had a very country feel, you know, like she's- The set and everything. Yeah, the yeah. set, everything. Mm -hmm. And even like her voice is so soulful that I like, it, if it, it it just really felt like it had that country music spirit. And I don't know if that's like energy coming from Beyonce. I mean Potentially. Yeah. But I'm 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 just loving like this like R and B slash country vibes. You know, you know like genres just, are a funny little thing. I yeah. just love the just bravery in general. Yeah, like, yeah. Just being able to like just try something new, shoot as hard as you can from as far as you can and yeah. like just be willing to stretch yourself. I mm -hmm. think there's just like a, just a refreshing, it just like adds just extra mastering to the tone, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, of the already beautiful vocals. So yeah, yeah. I, I love it. And I yeah. love, I love all that Chloe's doing, honestly. I just, yeah. I love this, the experimentation and just the I full just, submission hey, listen, to it. It's inspiring. Alex Vaughn and, and Chloe, I, um, Listen, let me be honest. I, I have been loving some Chloe and Halle since they used to do covers on YouTube. Yep. And like just like honeymoon avenue, and I was like, bro, I like that girl. What's up? Let's speak it into I like existence. That Anytime I see Chloe like get near a piano or get musical, I'm like, there she is. There like you go, girl. Yeah. But I would love to collab. I would love to collab with anybody, fine, friendly, and fire. Yeah. Her. All right. So that's the the three Fs that. Fine, Alex. friendly, fire, yeah, yeah, and yeah. for real, yeah. and, and so fucking for this is real. not full play. times, full oh, times, for real. <laughs> um, Tink also dropped "Charged Up," which I like. Mm -hmm. um, Party next door dropped another single, "Lose My Mind." You know he's gearing up. I think his album's coming out this. Uh, I think it's this Friday, Friday right? Yeah, 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 yeah. With that crazy ass mm. cover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's your you thoughts on the cover? cover? Yeah, I mean, I, jump scare. I, I, was it a jump scare? For, like when I, I personally I feel like. I personally feel like it was it didn't even make me flinch. It just no? it felt like, you know, like Tumblr era. It felt like a party next door cover. Like, I didn't uh, it was a little jump scare. It was, was a, a jump little scare? jump scare from, like I woke I remember waking up that morning and I think I saw it on Twitter first, question mark. And I was like, nah, he can't be for real. And then I went on his page on his Instagram Am and I'm I like, oh, he's for real. Mm, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's <laughs> a I little was like, nuts. okay. He saw everything but the butt crack. Like it felt like, it just felt like, like I said, like that Tumblr era, high exposure. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I was a little like, oh, okay. Yeah, right. I was Under, misunderstood. That's what it felt like to me. I don't know. I'm a little older than y'all, but because like my Tumblr was looking way different. I never had a Tumblr. Yeah. I actually, no, I, I tried to create a Tumblr and it, I never, like, it's I never like LinkedIn. got into I can't, it. I can't. I can't Figure out what's going. I was like, is this on? too cool? For me? I don't like, know. do I do I not care enough? I like, damn. I, I tried know. to get in the Tumblr era bad. I was like, eh, I'll just write songs. I'll play songs. I'll sing songs. Our guy Drum dropped an album. Drum and B. Yeah, Drum and B. Shout out I to like Drum. It. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. here for it. I've been sitting with it uh, a bit. Um, and then Gene Doe out. also dropped an EP, Nowhere Fast. Oh yeah, I listened that to that Destin this weekend. Destin Conrad. Yeah, that's a that's a crazy. Shout out, JD. Shout out, Destin Conrad. So you and Destin Conrad. 
Listen, 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 yeah. listen, listen. You guys are That's speaking it. You guys That's are speaking it to yeah. the universe. Oh, you know what? Speak Jordan Ward also dropped a song. Mm-hmm. You on that goddamn tiny desk. I can't believe I forgot it until now. Because <laughs> shout out to A V with the glasses, you know what I'm saying? Booty bouncing up and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah I do that. That's me, one that was of me. my favorite tiny desks. Really, like, I, I sit at my desk and rewatch it all the time. It was yeah. so fun because Jordan is, act, is a real friend in real life, and um, I'm a real fan. And I love being a friend and a fan that. of mm-hmm. people. Period. It just makes it even more fun to support. You know, lots of times you think like, oh, like you singing background or whatever. It's like, no, I'm just. I don't know. I'm hey, saying some good in the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's it was in the cut with my two. We be vibing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was so much fun. And then it, looked it like just. It was. It just means that, like, when the time comes from my tiny desk, that means I'm just getting little steps. Oh, steps, it's steps, coming. Steps oh, no. Nah, mm-hmm. If I had to predict, I think it's coming in under 18 months for sure. You think so? That. Yeah. It all depends yeah. on what you the put vocals, out, though. The vocals you know? is vocal. Well, we got to let it. We got to let it. We got to oh, let it marinate. There's, there's stuff to, 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 to come out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no, nah, that was fabulous. I love Jordan Ward, and I love Destin Conrad, and I love their song on Destin's album, and I love Destin's project. And I love John Doe because I know that's what we was talking about. Yeah, um, I love all of them. Yeah, nice. they're all very cool human beings too, and I think that's what makes me enjoy their music mm-hmm. and their art way more. That's mm-hmm. a fact. Because you can kind of tell some people kind of give like robot vibes or. You know, you don't want anybody to know who you are off the clock. Mm. But I really care about people off the clock because that's the part that nobody else cares about. Like right. people just kind of care about when you you're singing and dancing and you're on stage and you post a picture and you got an outfit. But like, what about when you take your wig off? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or when you don't have your grill in? Mm-hmm. Those are the times that I like to be there for the people, and they give that energy very naturally. I, spot on, per. Mm. Yeah, spot on. Well, of course, I am. Jovi E. My name is Jabari. And I'm Alex Vaughn. Girl, tell, tell the people where they can find you, what they can expect next. Let's just give you a whole. Yeah. Yes, listen, there is a real new era loading. And I've never said that and really meant it with my chest. Mm. And I really want to share it with you guys. And it's going to come with new music and new things that neither of us have seen before. So mm. make sure you follow me on all streaming. And all social media at Alex Vaughn. And uh, yeah, be safe and stay dangerous. Until then, ad libs and abs and ad libs, you know what I'm saying? Be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends and friends and friends. And vibe. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This was episode 13. We'll see you next week. Make sure y'all go to rnbonly.com slash calendar. Get some tickets to RB Only live shows. We got some festivals coming up. Um, we got some work coming up with Alex Vaughn too, you know. Indeed. So we got some we got some big content <laughs> coming, big 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 <laughs> content coming, and um, yeah, I'm just really grateful and appreciative for you coming in here. Uh, I can already tell like this is just the beginnings of our working relationship, you know. Uh, DJ Money is my brother, you know, and yeah, I mean, I love all the guys over at uh, LVRN, and yeah, there's just more more to come. So thank you so much for what you're doing for the new generation of R&B and um, we're here to support you as as much as you need. You're Thank always you. welcome. Thank you and I ain't going nowhere Her. and I appreciate you guys like holding it down for the R&B community and for showing me support for for some time yeah, and yeah. seeing me before I got to this point and seeing me before I get to the next point. Yeah, Her. yeah. So yeah. yeah. Let's get, let, everybody, burr, 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 burr. Alex Vaughn, you heard? Yeah.